What's Your Wrinkle with Dr. Arthur Perry. And we are back. This is Dr. Arthur Perry, and this is What's Your Wrinkle right here on WOR, where we have been sitting every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock to 7.30 for seems like forever since 2005. Noah and I have been doing this show, and he's not tired of it yet. Uh, maybe he is, okay, because he stepped away. All right, Noah. Well, tonight we've got a very special guest. We've got Dr. Leonard Lee, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, and he's going to be speaking about something that is fascinating. It is a seismic shift in the way aortic valves are handled in, in cardiac surgery. Dr. Lee, are you there? Yes. Hi, Dr. Perry. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show and taking uh, time on your Saturday evening. So, so TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, is, uh, is so popular now, but two years ago it wasn't even done in the United States ex experimentally. Tell me, right. what's the story with this new type of valve replacement? So TAVR is a fairly new procedure. It is FDA approved in the United States. Um, it is a procedure by which we can actually replace a patient's aortic valve through catheters introduced th through the groin. And this is done under uh, fluoro or similar x-ray type technology, um, much like angiograms are performed every day. And so now, the, aor aortic stenosis is the disease. What are the symptoms of aortic stenosis? How does someone know they have it? So aortic stenosis often is first diagnosed by a doctor when they hear a heart murmur. And then upon further questioning, they find out the patient may have some chest pains with exertion, may develop some shortness of breath with exertion, may have some ankle swelling at the end of the day, et cetera. Then the final diagnostics are are established with an echocardiogram, which is basically an ultrasound of the heart. And that is the, the initial phases of, of developing a diagnosis of aortic stenosis. So now if someone now had aortic stenosis, the traditional treatment has been opening the chest and, and replacing the valve through, uh, through cardiac surgery. Uh, but that right. is uh, fairly invasive, and, and many people are, that have aortic stenosis are older, as you know, yes. and in their 70s, 80s, and, and 90s. And so this new procedure is so revolutionary and safer than, uh, than the old type of surgery, isn't it? Yes. So the, the traditional surgery is still the gold standard for, patient, for most patients who have aortic stenosis. But an interesting statistic is that 40% of patients with aortic stenosis never see a heart surgeon, and many of them also never see a cardiologist. So hopefully by developing newer, less invasive techniques, we can be treating a greater patient population. So the patients currently who are candidates for the TAVR procedure, and as you had said, it's called transcatheter aortic valve replacement, the patients who are candidates for TAVR are the patients who are not candidates for traditional heart surgery because their risk is too high, they're too old, or they're too frail. So this opens the door to, to treat a greater patient population. So now, when you do this procedure, why don't you walk us uh, uh, through exactly you know, what a patient needs to go through. After he's had his echocardiogram and they've been diagnosed as having uh, aortic stenosis. Obviously, this is not just for anyone who has the diagnosis. It's some, for someone with symptoms of aortic stenosis, correct? That's correct. And once patients develop and, symptoms, their, their, their lifespan can be somewhat limited. If they develop symptoms of heart failure with aortic stenosis, generally speaking, their survival is somewhere in the neighborhood of about two years. If their only symptom is angina or chest pain, their survival is somewhere in the neighborhood of five years if left untreated. So once a diagnosis of aortic stenosis is made, oftentimes these patients are then referred to a cardiologist. The cardiologist will then perform a cardiac catheterization or an angiogram of the, of the blood vessels on the surface of the heart that feed blood to the heart muscle to make sure there are no other associated blockages there. If there are no associated blockages and their primary problem or their sole problem is aortic stenosis, then oftentimes they can be referred to a center such as ours that performs the TAVR procedure. The patient would then be evaluated by two surgeons, and if two surgeons agree that the patient is considered very high risk or inoperable because of their associated medical problems or age or frailty, 
Then they can go through the screening process to see if they're a candidate for the TAVR procedure. The screening process involves a formal echocardiogram, which has um, specific characteristics that we need to follow and specific steps and windows that we need to see. Once that's done, then a CT scan of the entire body is performed with contrast to look at the blood vessels from the aorta down to the iliac arteries, down to the femoral arteries, into the groins. Because the access of the, of the procedure is through the femoral artery, which is in the groin. And that's how we establish placing the aortic valve into the heart. Once the CAT scan is done, then we look at all their other lab work and we meet as a group. And there are two interventional cardiologists, two surgeons, two cardiac anesthesiologists, a whole series of cath lab technicians, OR nurses, perfusionists, um, and various other people who are involved in the procedure in the operating room. So it's, it's a rather large production uh, to get one of these procedures done. And, and, and absolutely fascinating. And, and this does not require general anesthesia, correct? Well, it, it, it actually does for the time being because it's safest to perform uh, under general anesthesia. This way we have total control of the patient and the patient's body. Um, if mm-hmm. performed under local, there are some other factors that become variables within the procedure which may not be uh, a positive thing for the patient's outcome. Uh-huh. Interesting. I'm speaking with Dr. Leonard Lee, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, and we've been speaking about the brand new transcatheter aortic valve replacement, which is now being done at the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. And by the way, if you're interested in uh, in this procedure, if your cardiologist agrees that you have aortic stenosis, you can call up the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, 888 888- M-D-R-W-J-U-H and ask for the cardiac surgery division. You can go online, R-W-A-R-W-J-U-H dot E-D-U. Dr. Lee, thank you so much. I really appreciate your taking your time this evening. This is Dr. Arthur Perry. You've been listening to What's Your Wrinkle right here on WOR. The preceding program was sponsored by the Perry Management Corporation, who is solely responsible for its content. What's your wrinkle with Dr. Art